Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to These Go to 11. Once again, my name is Nathan Bell. Joining me as always, Zach Bartles. Zach, what's going on, man? Hey, you know, it feels like we recently recorded something, but there's nothing on the feed. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, Nathan. <laughs> there, there is no evidence, so therefore <laughs> it did not happen. Um, <laughs> that was a grace of God, man. That was a turd. Yeah. The yeah. only good stuff was you talking about how like sweaty you were because your car didn't have air conditioning. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I walked in the door and my wife took one look at me. She's like, man, was camp really that bad? I'm like, no, I decided to roll the windows up and do the recording with the windows closed. And it was like over a hundred degrees that day. She's like, oh, and then it didn't end up recording. And so it was like, this was all for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, but, well. Yeah. You live and learn. And I don't know what you learned, but I was in my air conditioned office the whole time, so no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was easy enough for you. You had no problems. <laughs> oh man, I meant to I meant to say flamey oh my good hotman when you when you introduced me. <laughs> now that it's not Pride Month, I can say that sort of thing. That's right. Without anyone questioning my, my motives or my meaning. <laughs> yes, Sifu Hotman. <laughs> Stop calling me that. <laughs> oh man. Well, uh, we want to go ahead and jump right into today's topic. It's something everybody's been waiting for. But before we do that, we want to give a little bit of love and shout out to uh, Mission Aware. Um, people, don't forget to check out Mission Aware going into the summertime. Get some really cool beer mugs. They've got those really awesome Yeti tumblers that you can get, which keep your drinks cool for like 48 hours. Greg said that he had tried them and uh, he had put some ice in it and it was on a hot, hot, Baltimore day and the thing last and the thing was cool all day long. So he didn't have to worry about uh, his drink getting warm on him. So check out mission aware, get some cool products and enjoy the summer. Um, Zach, without further ado, avatar, the last airbender. We're Tell talking me... about the movie, right? Cause I only watched no. the movie. Oh, good grief. No, <laughs> we, I, I don't even want to acknowledge that that thing exists. I think we have to, because I think we have to talk about the next scheduled, not yet, but before we're done, we have to talk about the next scheduled live action adaptation, which I think requires us to acknowledge the first one and how they think they're going to avoid the same pitfalls. But let's talk about the good stuff first. Okay. So I, I'm interested from you, Zach, um, were you hooked right away with avatar or did it take you a few episodes to get into it 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 was a pretty uh it grabbed you pretty quick yeah i think that uh uh zach the guy who loaned me the, the discs told me you know it takes a while and the first season's not the best one and so just stick with it and you know we watched i watched it with my kid and you know he he got hooked and kept wanting to watch so i probably watched three of the first day you know they're only yep. 22 minutes or whatever a piece and yeah it gets it gets you in there um yeah and it, it it really does. I talked a little bit on my Q&A about this. My, ask me anything, rather. Um, the way that they dole out the pieces of the overarching quest and who the players are, it was very well planned. I always respect a story that's clearly like the author knows where it's going at the beginning. I can't. Yes. I, I won't give any of my time to something like Lost or something when you're like, OK, they don't even know what this means. They threw it out because it was a weird twist and they're scrambling to figure out. It's like the difference it between the first uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, which is this nice, tight story, and then yes. the second and third, where they were writing them as they went and you're like, this is a mess, man. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah, so, yeah, I really... Absolutely. Yeah, or the Matrix movies, you know, same sort of thing. You know, they, they end on this amazing twist. You're like, what? Oh, he asked so many questions. And then the third movie comes, you're like, oh, they didn't know any of the answers. But they knew the what? answers when they started this puppy. <laughs> and, and they very skillfully weave together, you know, how how they... Uh, introduced us to each aspect of each character, a lot of the backstory. Some of the stuff in this in this uh, production was completely the other side of the spectrum from what you usually think of as like an animated show on Nickelodeon. I mean, we had, it was more like, like how Breaking Bad or a show like that of that caliber would use, especially like a cold open uh, flashback. Yeah, that, that yeah. Sometimes is from before the story even started. Sometimes is a scene we've already seen, but with another perspective in it. And I mean, like just really, really good storytelling. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I remember the first time that I was introduced to it. It was actually my brother-in-law. He was in uh, college at that point. And he was like, oh, you got to check this out. You got to check this out. And I remember I had a day where I was uh, just feeling horrible. I was sick. And I was like, you know what? I just going to sit here and watch some watch some shows. And I was able to uh, go on to Nickelodeon and find the first season and start watching. And it just it grabbed me from the beginning. It was the, the humor mixed with um, the serious elements to it everything just really worked for me and pulled together. And so something that just like you just kind of grabbed me and and pulled me in to this world right from the very beginning. Yeah. And this, the casting was amazing too. Like the, yes, the voice acting was top notch. Um, I don't know. I couldn't believe it was actually a kid doing Ang or Ong in the movie. Uh, (laughs) And, and like, I'm going, okay, A, how did they know this kid's voice wasn't going to drop along with, you know, the coming of puberty? And B, how did they get a kid with those chops? I mean, when he would get angry, when he would weep, I mean, he was very, very good. That was a, he held that that whole thing together. I, I, myself, having watched all of them at least once and a lot of them a couple times, I -hmm. really don't even think of it as Aang's story. But it does. He had to be good. It all had to hang on him. I mean, it was yes. named after him, but it was. I mean, it was. That's another thing that was wonderful about it is that it was telling another story via this kind of messianic quest situation. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, we we talked briefly about this a few weeks ago, but you're absolutely right. All of the voice acting was just so on point. All of the major characters that they brought in and brought together. Um, you know, obviously they're doing sound editing and things like that, but they, they pulled that editing together to bring out amazing moments of chemistry with these characters and, um, all of the, the minor characters as well. You know, to me, there was just no, in in this world, there was no throwaway moment. There was no throwaway character and even the major minor characters that they bring into this, you know, you have Mark Hamill voicing, um, uh, fire Lord Ozai, fire Lord Ozai. Yeah. You know, and, uh, the job he does with that. And then you have Jason Isaacs who in season one voices, um, Admiral Zhao. Oh, we got a couple of star Wars guys now. So, yeah, I mean, all of these, all of these moments and all of these characters really just come together to bring this world out and uh, the animation you and I talked about, uh, you know, animation before and how there's really everybody's moving to that CGI computer, you know, animation stuff. And this is just a fun animated show, something, you know, something I would have sat down and watched on a Saturday morning growing up, um, which which to me enhanced the experience of it. Let, let me give you an unpopular opinion. And this is going to okay. turn – and when you say everyone was waiting for this, what you meant was like seven people were really waiting for the chance to sound off on this stuff um, and probably to tell me that I was wrong about some things, including this. Okay. I can't stand Mark Hamill. I, oh, okay. I, in any context. When he was on – oh, good grief. What was he on? Um, Arrow? Was he on Arrow? Or The Flash. He was on The Flash. He was, he was like the, the Flash, Riddler, yeah. discount Riddler. Yeah. And I was like, good grief, this guy has gotten worse, if that is possible, since his time as stinking Luke Skywalker. And then every, I find out that like people are obsessed with his portrayal of the Joker, and people are like, oh yeah, it's better than Nicholson, it's better than Ledger. And I'm going, what? Are, his voice got really deep and like throaty. Other than yeah. that, I don't know. I don't see the appeal. And... I don't know why, but every time that guy came on, as soon as I realized who it was, even maybe it's my issue, because as soon as I realized who it was is when it started to bug me. Um, yeah. <laughs> one thing they did really well, though, and, and maybe after that, uh, we should both talk about maybe things we didn't like about it, since I already just sure. broke that, you know, broke the, the, the glass on that one. But, like, I thought one thing they did really well was mm-hmm. building up that character, how you never saw his face in the whole first yeah. season. And then when you finally see it, you're expecting it to be like 
something strange, you know, like he's burned or, you know, whatever. And, right, and right. you're just like, oh, no, it's just that they were making him mythical because you did feel kind of like this huge half rise out of your seat in that moment when they first show him. And then yes. they just, you know, he just becomes a regular character where you see him full, uh, you know, full view every time. But that was that was really well done. And the slow kind of portioning out, like, like you remember the end of um, the first or second season of the Voltron reboot? Yes. yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Hagar says, uh, like, they finally defeated Zarkon. And, and yep. you're like, where are they going to go from here? And the last words of the whole season are uh, Hagar saying, summon Prince Lotor. And uh, my son and I just jumped to our feet and high five. And we're like, we have to wait months to see this. Somehow, yeah. even though I, I mean, we, we were excited because we knew that character from the eighties and f- somehow, even though this is the first time I'm, I'm encountering any of these characters, when yep. you, when you, uh, first see Azula at the end of yes. that season, it's like, what? And even yes. though you've never seen her before, it's like a new, they're like, here, he has a sister. And, but they so skillfully, uh, teased that and built it up that it really did kind of create this it, it self-created this uh this myth that yes. you were already bought into in advance yes yeah absolutely absolutely and i you know there there were so many so many moments and things that built and left you hanging from one season to the other you know you talked about azula and then once you get in and you start meeting azula and you start getting into season two and and going through Zuko's whole quest and process, um, of, which is the best know, thing in the whole story, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. I mean, season two, I think by far is my favorite, uh, season out of them all because there's so much going on with all the characters. To me, all of the acting is so prominent. The development of all the characters is so strong. You see Katara coming into her own as a waterbending master you see Ang going through and trying oh. to, you know, <laughs> he shall not be named that. Um, just going through and, you know, when he loses Appa and that whole sense of where he's in the desert and then he finds the people who took him and, you know, he just goes off the rails, you know. And then Zuko uh, in his quest alone. and um, Dude, you that know, episode the focus- with the, uh, like, all the spaghetti western imagery. Yes, I watched that. I think I watched that three times. That was one Is of it, the I, best single episodes of television I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and and again, like when we're talking about this show, I, I think you know, for those who aren't familiar with it, um, and and us talking about it, I don't think this is just a great kids animated show. I think this is a great show in general. This is a great series that came out. There are so many great acting moments there are so many great episodes that came out of this series um that you know that that can't be overlooked i mean the 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 acting that is poured into this show by the voice actors and the writing that was poured into this by the writers the direction the animation everything that has been poured into this just comes together to be a tight show not just a nice little kid show did did you maybe it was just me but did you think they were kind of like sneaky clever about the way I, I didn't realize they were building this team where there was a um, waterbender a, an earthbender which by the way Toph is the other best character like she's the right, best side yes. character uh, <laughs> a, a, a firebender and an airbender who also can do everything else like that they had all four present and then yes. also like a couple of basically ninjas. Um, but like, it wasn't until every, I was like, wait a minute, wait, they got everybody. Oh, now they're ready. Like it, they, they didn't, they didn't, uh, forecast and broadcast any of that in advance. It was, it was all kind of so organic. And I hate that term usually, but it, it fits here. It was all so organic yes. that you were like, oh my goodness, how did I not see what you were doing? And, th- and the fact that I didn't see what you were doing because I was so in the moment of each, of each, uh, conflict and each struggle and, and that, I, I wasn't trying to zoom out and see the forest. I was looking at each leaf, and, and they right. did that really well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and first, I think you mean uh, tough, not tough, right? And uh, what the huh? What are you saying? Tough, 
Don't you remember when they go and watch the uh, oh, play right. of themselves? Oh, <laughs> it's a dude, and she's so excited. She's like, ah, I gotta be muscular. <laughs> oh, what a funny character, man. Oh, my goodness. And what, a, what an adorable voice. And then to have her be so, like, gruff. Yeah, that was... But she did she ever find her parents? Like, at the end, did she... <laughs> She went home. Like I think she just kind of settled in Ba Sing Se. Like, isn't that where they kind of like so. left us at the end? Yeah, we're at Everybody the tea just house hanging around the like, tea shop. She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm 11 and I live here. But yeah. that's the thing that I mean. Occasionally, Calvin would would uh, we'd watch an episode and Calvin would be like, oh, it's so cool when, and I'd be like, but but what about? And I'd bring up something like that. What about her parents? They're, just, they're all just sitting at home worried. They think she was kidnapped. And I realized oh, this was this was written with kids in mind. And you have to just engage your inner kid and not think about, you know, like you have to engage like, like when you read Calvin and Hobbes, sometimes it's more enjoyable when you look at things from his dad's point of view, because that's more who we are now. But right. to really get the, the point of this, you have to be the Calvin character. And, and then this one, you have to, you have to be like, you have to feel like you're one of the kids along the way on this, this quest that's way bigger than you. Like even yeah. living on your own. And like accomplishing things and, and eating and stuff is, is a challenge, right? Like finding enough yes. scratch to get food and stuff. Yeah, it, it was, it was, uh, a really fun. I mean, it was, it, a lot of my favorite stuff is geared toward kids with a conscious decision to make it palatable to parents too. You know, yes. to put in those, those, uh, more subtle things. Those B plots that that kids aren't going to care about, but parents are, and even those little in references and jokes that you're you're not going to get. You're going to get that the fifteenth time you watch it when you pull the DVDs back out when you're thirty five. You know what I mean? You're right. not going to get it the first five times because because it's over your head. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Now let me ask you something. Um, as we're sitting here talking about some of this stuff, because one of the things when we had talked about this last, you really hadn't gotten into season three yet, and we had talked about the fact that. Um, uh, Mako had had died at some point in season two, but pretty much had finished most of his voice recording in season two. Mm-hmm. Watching season three, did you notice like a strong change no. they in had, the voice? They had him not speak for so long that I'm like, oh, this guy must not be very good at it. Whoever they hired, Keith mm-hmm. or Greg or whoever, um, and, and you know the most white sounding guy in the world. But I I think they got somebody who already had the right accent or was just an absolute master at, at mimicking. Cause he had the kind of, there's something about, I almost just tried to do it and I'm like, now nah, in 2019, that'll just sound racist. Um, <laughs> but there's something about almost, almost a slurring of the words um, right. and a very unique cadence to the way he spoke. Yes. And like, we, I think they gave us like a number of episodes without him speaking. So we would kind of forget and when he talked right. again, we go, oh, he's talking. And I, there was there was no jarring. No, I was fine, and I'm glad that they didn't just ditch the character when the actor died because yes. <laughs> that whole subplot where he got all jacked in prison. Yeah, I was like, what are they doing? <laughs> then they just forget about him for like three or four episodes, and then he broke out. You didn't even see it. He's just like, oh yeah, he smashed through the wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of absurdity, but that's okay. It, it's an absurd world they made, and it's right. absurd rules that they've created, and so. They've, they've given themselves permission. And if we're watching, we've given them permission. Yes, exactly. And, and that was, I mean, to me, those were, it was such great moments in it. You know, when we were, um, you were talking about the nations coming together and they do that in a number of ways. You know, you see that with the Lotus group, you know, coming together and you have all tribes represented there as well, realizing that their individual nation um, you know, is, is inferior compared to the greater good of, you know, coming together, working for this common good of, you know, in this world, the balance of the elements and things like that. And so it was neat, you know, not only seeing Aang and his group coming together, but also these other pocket groups of the other nations and the other elements coming together to work together for, for this common goal. Um, so I, you know, really enjoyed that. And, um, you know, the, to me, again, talked about the animation, the bending in this, um, you know, coming from a perspective of a martial artist, you know, the fact that they took the time to actually study specific styles for each bending element and incorporate that was really neat to see as well. Um, so you weren't, you know, you were getting a, a fun martial arts uh, film or, or series in this as well. It wasn't just, oh, we're going to throw something together. I mean, you know, they're actually doing 
legitimate movements from styles that they're supposed to be representing. Um, and, and I found that enjoyable to watch. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the, the fight scenes could have been, well, I mean, you know, again, watch the movie. They could have been stupid looking. And yeah. Zero percent buy in. <laughs> Instead, they felt uh, you, you had the sense that their emotions, their movements were related to the elements flying at each other. And it had, it was like a gunfight on crack mixed mm-hmm. with, because then they would run in and, and, you know, they'd also, spin kick each other in the midst of all that. I mean, it was frenetic. It was, and, and yeah. none of it until the very end, I didn't feel like anything was kind of phoned in fight wise. It was very, um, you, you could slow it down and watch every movement. And they, I, I got a lot of them. There were at least a half dozen times where I got the impression there was some of that over animation, like what Disney used to do where somebody did this stuff and they animated yes. right over top of them. Cause it looked almost too real for, for yeah. traditional animation. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit, um, since, since you just brought it up there, um, something, you know, things being phoned in, let's talk a little bit about that. Things that you, uh, did not like in the series. All right. Let, I have just a few. And, and if I didn't, it would be disingenuous. I mean, there's things I don't like about Breaking Bad, which is the best possible television, but sure. for, first of all, part of the strength of it and, and the draw of it Kind of like with like a show like uh, Into the Badlands was the mashing together of kind of old and new. Yes, you know I, yep. I really like, and they did this in Dragon Prince, and I've seen you know it's become kind of common now. The the say the the kind of philosophy of these are young people. They would be talking in young people parlance. They wouldn't be talking to each other in some King James kind of thing. So just have them use modern slang. Yeah, you immediately give them permission because it's fun to watch and it only makes sense. And this is another world. So who's to say they didn't have our slang whenever this is happening. Um, sure, sure. But even though there was some strength in that, there were a few times when I had to just kind of go, all right, right, hold on, suspend disbelief. We've got this, this established world where they have, uh, you know, airships, they have, Tanks with complete with guns that shoot fire like a flamethrower. They have, uh, I mean, like with treads. Like that was the like the, the actual treads. Yeah. They have submarines yeah. that shoot torpedoes. You know, we've got like uh, cable cars, but we're still using swords. Like I, I don't know. To me, right, right. the fact that no one was like, "Hey, look what I came up with." This is I call it right. a gun. Like I mean, and, and yeah. it would have made it a worse movie, <laughs> granted. And it's the same thing with with something like Badlands, which which I think was kind of a, a garbage show, even though it was kind of fun. This was much better. Yeah. But you have to just stop and say, okay, from a writer point of view, they may not have, you know, it, it maybe a. I'm just assuming that they would come up with everything we have, and they wouldn't. Maybe that's just a bad assumption. But really, it comes down to what would it do to the show if they weren't relying on swords for hand-to-hand combat and it would make it worse. So there's that. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, I, at the end of the day, I wouldn't change it. You know, I, I'm, I might, mm-hmm. I don't know. You might make an element somewhere where someone, you know, I mean, I have an episode where someone creates one and because of the bending, it just backfires, right. you know, it doesn't work and you know, forget it. I, I don't know. And, and that's a nitpick. Um, the yeah. other thing I really didn't like was I thought, I felt like the ending was weak. Uh, on a yeah. couple of fronts. One, one thing would be the, the fight scenes between him and Ozai. Yes. Like, I have a huge TV. Um, yeah. this past year, we, we had a, like a 14 year old little TV. And when my, the church said, here's the box of money. Thanks for being our pastor. We were like, this is the year we're getting a big one. And we went nuts. Yeah. We got it. We got a, it's like 66 inches or something. And so nice. it's not like we're looking at a tiny little screen. Don't rob my house. It's, you know, I've got a, a dog that'll bite your ankles off. But, uh, but like, so we're looking at a big picture. And even then, everything was so tiny. Like, it was like, and, and everything was just so quickly. It was, it was animated in a, a very vague way where like, yeah. he's a, one of them's a, a, a orange fireball and one of them's a blue fireball. And, and it's just like zoom, 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 zoom. And they did that for so long. I kind of it took me out of it. I got I got bored yeah. for the, maybe one of the first times in the whole series, right at the climax, which is yeah. not good planning. And then right. the other thing about that ending was introducing the like lion turtle thing 
and the uh-huh. idea of energy bending and all this stuff so late in the game in a show that was so good at foreshadowing and tossing out, you know, shadows of what was to come and then uh, clicking those things. Th- there was all of a sudden it was just this kind of deus ex machina. Uh, and it was just like, boom, OK, this guy gave me the solution. Who was this? It, those were those were never, as far as I could remember, they were never mentioned before. It just it felt very out of sync with the rest of a very well written show. Yeah, and I, I was much more into the battle. Like the the big climax battles of the other two seasons were better. Yeah, um, especially yeah. Uh, season two. And then oh the, yes, I mean they were all. In fact, all, all the big fights were better uh, yeah. than that last one. And, yeah. and that was a bit of a disappointment. I thought we were going to get some real awesome, crazy stuff with between like 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 you felt like you were there. Instead, it felt like I was watching someone play a video game for a lot of it, and yeah. and that bummed me out. What what about you? Yeah, I so there there are a couple things um, in there. Um, one is I would agree with you that I I felt like what they did with us was they took some really close up battles and bending battles that they had established and built throughout the entire series. And then, like you said, they pulled you back from that. And it was like, I'm watching, I'm watching Ang and his avatar form, just throw these huge, you know, you know, um, nuclear bombs at, uh, nuclear, you know, um, (laughs) and, uh, you know, and and to me, it was just it was just mass destruction. There wasn't any of the elegance that they had established in the fighting style or the martial arts style. Right, exactly. Um, and so I would I would definitely agree with that. That I I would have wanted more from those battles. I wanted to see more. I wanted to see more up close bending from those battles. Um, so it almost seemed like once he powered up, it was like. He, he just powered up so much. It was like, well, what's the point? I mean, either either power him up so much that it's like he's done and over with. There's nothing that could happen or show me that, you know, Ozai is powerful enough that he can put up a fight with him. So I, I would definitely I would definitely agree with that and say that I wish they had done more on that. The other thing was I felt like moving into season uh, three, they moved away from. You know, this fun crush that um, Aang had for Katara and they moved it into a level of a relationship that I was just kind of like, I I really don't care about this. Right. Yeah. Um, To see the 12 year old and the the 14 year old girl like open mouth kiss. I was like, what am I? At least I mean, again, at least it was a boy and a girl, which is unusual today in in children's programming. But, you know, yeah, it it was a little bit it was a little too like Dawson's Creek, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. And so I felt like, you know, you could, you know, and and I see this, you know, teaching middle schoolers, you see the crushes going on and things like that. But like moving it into the actual relationship aspect of things, I'm like, I I really don't, I don't, I don't care about that. Right. Yeah. You're like, I ignore this all day long. Why do I need to also ignore it at night? And and I thought that like, I mean, May was a great character. Um, What was her, the acrobatic girl? Um, Um, Oh, something uh, Lee. Ty Lee. Ty Lee. They were yeah. both great characters, but yes. like, but I didn't care about May. Like, what I wanted was Ang to realize, no, I kind of belong to the world, not to this one person. Um, right. And for her to wind up with uh, Fire Lord uh, Zuko, and, and that I think would have been a really cool ending. I don't know how yeah. that would have worked for like having kids and having them be like half and half. They never really established that. Can you? Can you be? Are you just a human? And are there? I mean, wouldn't there be intermarriage between, um, like? Water Tribe and Fire oh, yeah. Nation. And there have to be if there's going to be more. I haven't watched the Korra thing. But if there's going to right. be more airbenders and there's going to be a airbender to become uh, the Avatar next time it gets to that point in the cycle, there's going to have to be some, you know, a lot of uh, intermarriage, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's the, – the this is what I would say with um, The Legend of Korra is if you watch the first two seasons – and you can be satisfied with the way season two ends. It's a great series. Okay. Um, but don't, I, I wouldn't watch beyond that because really what happened was, um, was kind of the whole um, lost thing where I think they started off solid knowing where they wanted this to go. But by the time they got to season three, 
they they just had no clue mm, and they were okay. like we're just going to start throwing things together and then by the time you get to the end of season four it's like oh we're, we're going to push our agenda here and um it i will say this it's more subtle but it's still very clear and it's there so um but if you can watch the first two seasons and be content with how with the wrap up of the first two seasons, it's actually I would recommend it. Yeah, I, I don't think I, I I feel like anything that's not going to be as good as this, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna, I, I don't want to watch it. Like like I don't want to. Yeah. And and I've seen screenshots. It's cool looking graphics, but a little bit different style. Yeah, uh, look more like kind of what they did with season two of the Dragon Prince. So not the cool kind of uh, low frame rate animation, but that level of realism and yeah. I, yeah. One thing I really loved about this was that it, 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 a little more as it went along, it would employ some of the anime, you know, like yes, y- your, your face gets enormous and red when you're, you're like, angry, that, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And it was it wasn't tethered to reality because once you tether something like this to reality, or yeah. say for example, try to make it do a live action adaptation, you've right. lost the charm. <laughs> you've you've given it away. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this, that um, the one thing that season two or that the Legend of Korra does in season two that's really neat is it explains more of the backstory and history of the Avatar, which was really cool. Um, There's a two part episode where they kind of go back and explain the beginnings of it, um, which adds which actually brings in more of the Lion Turtle stuff. Um, and oh, gives more one thing backstory I want more of it's lion turtle. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, but it also gives backstory. Like it goes all the way back to the very first avatar and how, how it all came to be, which I thought was interesting from that perspective. But, um, I would say as a series as a whole was not, uh, nearly, like you said, it's not nearly as strong. Um, and so, yeah, if, if you think, you know, even just watching that, you're going to be, you know, overly disappointed, um, yeah, not worth it. This is, uh, Joy and I went back and re- we, we rewatched this in preparation for, uh, this podcast that you and I were going to do. And it really, it's such a fun standalone series. There was really no need to, to do any more or to ramp it up the level that they did in, in Legend of Korra. So. Well, and they go longer, four seasons instead of three. I mean, that implies yeah. that you, you're now like, you're doing something more important. I don't know. I, right. I, I may check it out. Like, and, and I, I'm not somebody who's like, here's the thing. My my mother would never have let me watch this thing when I was my son's age because yeah. of all the Eastern religion stuff. Right. Um, I find it a great opportunity to talk to my son about different religions and different views and what we believe and what different people believe. Uh, and it's, right. a, it's a fun, uh, a very fun uh, portrayal of certain Eastern uh, religious elements. And... Um, like, I'm not worried about him seeing, like, I guess at the end of Legend of Korra, I'm just going to, like, go ahead and uh, spoil something I haven't even seen for everybody. Right. Um, they, like, lock eyes, hold hands, and jump through a portal, and you're like, okay, they have the hots for each other. Like, I mean, you, right. you really would have to leave the world uh, or become full-on Amish to not, or just watch Vid Angel crap. Right. To not <laughs> encounter this kind of stuff. I, I, a good buddy of mine is a Lutheran pastor, way more conservative than me. And I said, uh, have you been watching this Superman show? Because I've heard that it's really heavy-handedly liberal, like sexual ethics and stuff. Mm. And he said, yeah. And at the end of it, we always just turn it off and say, well, you know, what does God teach about these kind of things? And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, so, like, that, that's the way I want to be conservative. I don't yeah. want to. And, you know, it, when you shield your kids from every aspect of anything in life that doesn't comport to our narrow, admittedly narrow, narrow way. Jesus called it right. the narrow way. Um, then they're not ready for it. And when they right. encounter it elsewhere, they've not been prepared for it. So, I mean, that's that, that itself, I think, I think I, when I wrote about this on the, these go to 11 discussion group, we were so yep. hip deep in like Oreo and Pepsi shoving their rainbows down my throat for the whole month of June. That yeah. I was just, I was just like, no, no more of that. Yes. I'm not going to pay for this, uh, for more yeah. of this. But, I, I, you know, I've sobered up a little in the past three days, so I, yeah. I may check it out. I don't know. Let, yeah. Let's let's start a discussion on the discussion group on Facebook. People can make pro and con, whether or not it's worth it, whether it kind of soils the the kind of simplicity and beauty of the first one. 
Mm -hmm. uh, or whether it does really add to it. Okay, fair enough. That sounds great. So there you are, listeners. Let us know. Um, The other thing that I was going to say as we were talking, so the the lion turtle thing, it is, the name lion turtle is mentioned a couple times. Okay, fill me in. But it's it's never really talked about or described. It's almost like a myth inside of this myth that Mm -hmm. we're watching. Um, you know, nobody's ever seen these things. They, you know, they're, they're, they're out of recorded history. Um, and so nobody even really knows or thinks they exist, but I believe when they're in the library, um, in, in season two, the, the spiritual library or the spirit library, um, they, they do come across writings that reference a lion turtle. And well, I mean, there's so many platypus bears and stuff. It's hard to keep it straight. Right. Right. And one of them's like, oh, I didn't think they existed. So I see. Okay. Um, so it is ready. at least mentioned and referenced in there. But but it, in terms of, you know, what they are, it's not revealed to us until that episode. Um, so that I didn't have as much, um, as much of an issue with. The other thing uh, that I found uh, a little annoying sometimes was uh, the girl who plays – uh, voices Katara, Mae Whitman, I felt like the times that she was overly angry was almost comical. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm thinking back to the end of season one where she's trying to face the, the waterbending master. And like her tone, um, I remember watching it this time around being like, it's it's almost like a cheesy kung fu movie where it's like, I will challenge you and I will be you and um so there those were a couple things that i felt like i think you should have gone back and re-recorded that because there were other times where again i've talked so much about how the voice acting was so great um but there were times where i felt like i think you should have done a couple more takes on that Hmm. uh on that um but in terms of like the show overall again i it is one of my favorites it is one that i will go back to and watch over and over again the rewatch value the the comic value joy joy and i were watching season two and we both just busted out laughing at the same part that we always do and it was the part where uncle iroh had just been attacked by azula in you know that kind of uh deserty town deserted town and it's afterwards zuko's you know trying to make him tea and he's like you know, I, I think you need to start training me again. I know what you're going to say. She's my sister and we should learn to get along. And, you know, you think these wise words are going to come out of him. And all of a sudden it's like, no, she's crazy and she needs to go down. Yeah. And we just busted out. La- it's one of our favorite parts. Um, just timing wise, you know, the comedy that went into this. Um, and and even those moments of like, you know, when Zuko finds Appa after he's been lost. And Iroh confronts him down in uh, under Ba Sing Se. And, you know, just so much heart and emotion um, coming from it. So, Yeah. What, what do you think is the funniest line in the whole series? I'm going to go with, uh, yeah, my first girlfriend turned into the moon. And, <laughs> and Suki's like, yeah, that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite line in the whole series is when... Um, when Sokka is uh, trying to impress Yue and he gets on Appa and they're sitting down and he's like, hey, watch this. Yip, yip. <laughs> but there are there are tons of great lines and one liners from this. I mean, we could we could probably dedicate an entire podcast to one liners. <laughs> I'd have to do some research oh. and watch it again. Yeah, I remember laughing a lot. There was a lot of broad comedy, and then there was a lot of stuff where you, like, laugh a little bit, and then as you're laughing, the, like, kind of thrust of why it's so funny hits you anew, and you laugh louder, and you got to rewind the show. There was a lot of that stuff going on. But, dude, that episode, um, maybe it wasn't that Yeah, it was that one. The the, the one with the the funniest line also had the creepiest thing in the world. Like, my, my, my son just came out of, like, the age where he's really scared of some stuff in movies, like... We wouldn't be able to watch anything with a skeleton in it when he was, like, eight or nine. Like, just, like, sure. that kind of stuff really creeped him out. He was always ready to cover his eyes. And now he watches, you know, we watched The Lord of the Rings, the whole thing through, and he's like, oh, he just chopped his head off. 
and he doesn't care, um, which is maybe means I'm a bad parent. But then, but we we're watching this, and when it got like we were like sitting on the couch together, and that face stealer thing comes out. Oh yeah, this this kid, he's he's eleven. He like snuggled up to me. He was like a little bit scared of it. And it was a really really creepy idea, and the execution of it it was scary. It was like yeah. scarier than a lot of stuff on actual horror movies where it's kind of. Uh, gory, but not scary. You know, this was legitimately troubling, like psychologically, all these different yeah. faces and the way that thing moved. It was awful. I mean, it was awesome, yeah. but it was awful. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. There were there were definitely uh, those moments in there, too. And that's, uh, to me, that's one of the reasons why I think it's such a great show is you, you go from, you know, this lighthearted, you know, children's show to this very serious you know emotional moment between family to um you know again going into some of that eastern religion where these myths you know come to life and they do a good job at pulling off uh the creepy factor in in some of these episodes as well um what did your uh what did your son i mean i'm curious now that you said that said that what did your th- son think of the episode right before they go into the fire nation uh, capital for the first time where Ang has like been up for like 72 hours straight and he's good, like hallucinating and going nuts. Uh, did he find any of that stuff creepy or nah, was nah. that just kind of like fun, crazy stuff for him? Yeah, no, that whole acid trip thing. That was pretty fun. That, yeah. We, we, we actually, I, I remember that being kind of an amusing episode uh, yeah. and it was a great, it was a great device too for him to have been, he and, and I can relate to that. Like he'd try yeah. to lay down to sleep, and his mind would just be like, "No, no, stuff is about to happen. Important stuff. There's stuff that you need to do." And and uh, the the he's surrounded by all these people who are in it with him, but not really because they don't right. feel the pressure that he feels. And that yes. uh, related to me uh, real well, and and was really well portrayed. Um, you know what was another another really funny line when What's they're that? watching the play, and yep. uh, I think it was Toph was like. Wait, did Jet die? And, and right. Suko goes, ah, they left that pretty uh, up in the air. It was, it was bad. I don't remember exactly how he yeah. worded it, but because we had had that discussion the day before, like, did, did he die or not? Because he right. was lying when he said he'd be okay, but he couldn't know for sure whether he was going to die. But then we see all of his henchmen later without him. So I, right. I, I think he died. But that was very funny. <laughs> that, that, uh, that whole thing where they could like almost get away with a clip show by doing yes. this like goofy play of the whole series up to that point it just showed how it was it was so confident in itself and when a show is really cocky like that but it doesn't have the legs to stand on that is just a recipe for pure shark jumping just awfulness but when it's been good enough and it becomes self-referential and you get that payoff uh i feel like that's you've reached a new level then for that you've leveled up Yes, exactly. Well, and it was it was a great way to portray the clip show too. You know, it wasn't your typical. You know, I mean, uh, every show does it now, but this was you know this was a unique way to do that. You know, let's go let's go watch ourselves, um, which was you know hugely fun. Thinking about well, how how do these people view me, and how do I view myself? Um, so yeah, really enjoyed that one. I enjoyed uh, a lot of the, um, you know, individual episodes as well. Uh, so like Sokka, when he goes to get training from the sword master. That was sweet. Yeah, you, you get to see these different sides and you get to see how people who are older and wiser perceive you. And, um, you know, this is your view of yourself and, you know, I, I'm kind of down in the dumps because you can do all these cool things, but I can't, you know, and I think, I think it was like Katara or Aang who were like, well, we've all had masters to train us. You've never had a master. So, you know, like so much going into that and then seeing his journey, self-discovery. Another thing that I really liked was when Aang got lost and, you know, everybody had been on their Zuko journey and Toph is like, oh, it's my turn. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> this is the worst um, adventure ever or whatever. Yeah, that right. Really <laughs> uh, yeah, it was not. So. So, so tell me this, man. Are you excited mm-hmm. for 
a Netflix live action where real creative control has been given to the creators. They've said they're not going to whitewash it. They're not going to fall into a lot of the traps that, that uh, M. Night, or, or as, uh, I don't remember who was the guest on How Did This Get Made, but but when they talked about that, he called him M. Afternoon Shyamalan because it, was, it yeah. wasn't even up to <laughs> M. Night's standards. Like, <laughs> are you excited about it? I mean, I, I'm kind of, I know why they're doing it. They're doing it because if you came up with these characters and you have a chance to keep exploring them, you do. Netflix is doing it right. because they know they'll make money and that's why they exist. But as right. a fan of the show, I'm over here going, just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. I will right. feel obligated to watch it. I have Netflix. I'm going to want to see it. I'll probably watch the whole thing unless it sucks. But I don't right. think at the end of the day... It will. I mean, I probably would have just done better to watch the the animated show again. It doesn't. It isn't screaming to be made into anything other than what it is. Yeah, I I agree. So, a couple things on that. First, when so when I heard that M Night Shyamalan was doing um, the Last Airbender, I was sad. And then <laughs> I heard that <laughs> I heard that the writers were going to be attached to it. So that made me happy. And then I saw the movie and I got depressed and angry (laughs) and angry. (laughs) And so shooting fireballs out of your hands. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm sitting here watching this thing. And I think part of what made it so frustrating was they had, they had some key moments where it was like, it almost was good, but then they'd rip the carpet from underneath you. And it's like, no, no, that's not what you do. Like, the first time they introduce introduce Ang and they're like Ong, and something as little as that, I'm like, that's not how you pronounce his name. <laughs> like, and so there were little moments that were like, okay, no, 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 this is horrible. This this is a disaster. Who who watched this and gave the go ahead to say yes? Let's put this piece of garbage on the big screen. Um, <laughs> Dude, you, you may I, not know this, but I did a little research, and it seems to me that they are still planning to make part two. Oh. I don't know how. The guy, kid who played Aang must be like, you know, 19 by now. But it was in I like know. some trade yeah. thing I found, and it was only like nine months old. And, and M. Night Shyamalan, I mean, and, and, and he, how much time did he put between um, Unbreakable and then Split? And right. I mean, like, so he's willing to, to go back to these old things if he if he likes them. Oh, man, that right. would be a real travesty, and especially I, if he... I might have to cry. <laughs> um, but and see, so a lot of people were like, well, you know, Aang wasn't Asian. Why did you get a white kid? And why did you do this? Why did you see to me? Like, I looked at the four nations and I was like, the biggest issue I had was. Why wasn't one of your nations, I don't care which one, but why wasn't one of them Asian? Because, like, when you look at the map, you kind of see, like, there's this divide of nations around the world. And so if you're like, well, the airbenders are going to be, you know, the Westerners and, you know, the the water tribe is going to be, you know, your um, Native Americans and you're going to make the, you know, earthbenders European and – but, like – there wasn't e- even really a clear delineation of like who was who. It was just like, let's just, let's throw a whole bunch of white people in there. Let's throw a whole bunch of Indians in there. And we're going to call this avatar, the last airbender. And these are our nations. And so to me, like it was just on the level of just being a fun and, you know, like that to me, part of what was really great about the series was these adventures that they were taking in this world that had been created. Um, and, and I didn't feel like there was any of this adventuring. I didn't really feel like there was any of the humor or any of the lightheartedness that, that was brought to it. It it just seemed like, let's make this teenage, like after seeing, uh, and watching some of the twilight stuff, it was like, that's, really what it kind of was, was this brooding, depressing show. And there was no fun in it. There was nothing that even resembled the world in it. And it was just, again, it was just horrible. So all that to say, going back to Netflix, I think Netflix has the potential to pull together something that will be fun. However, and I'll still like you, I'm still going to watch it. I've got a subscription to Netflix. I'm still going to watch it. I'm still, you know, unless it's completely trash, I'll watch the whole thing. But to me, I would rather see them go back 
and write some side stories to some of this stuff or come up with the next series that can match up to what the first series was in animation form. Um, to me, I, I think that would be a much better use of, you know, the Netflix platform. Um, but that's kind of my thoughts with it. Yeah. I'll give it a chance. I mean, I just, here's the thing. I don't get, I don't get the trend. It's hopping on a trend, which is, well, we had a uh, cell animated Aladdin. Now we need a computer animated Aladdin. Oh, we had a, and and they call them live. But, but they're, what if I told you they're also animated? Like, I mean, there was a a Beauty and the Beast. So we need a new Beauty and the Beast. We need, and, and it's just like, no, you really, really don't. Again, I get why they did it because of money. But at the end of the day, I don't have to, I'm not making money on it. I would ostensibly be spending money on it. I mean, I'm not, because this is on on Netflix, but like any of these things, unless they're going to bring something really big and new to it and not just retread the same territory, um, but in a different medium, the medium, like the medium is the message, right? And the medium was perfect for, for, uh, dude, like there are things in that movie that if you did, or in that show rather, that if you did them as a, a live action, it would be stupid. For example, uh, even something as simple as him taking his staff and popping out the yes. lighter part. That it, it doesn't really, yes. it wouldn't work. And it would, if you had an actual staff, it would look dumb. There's something mystical about that thing, but it wouldn't work it, CGI or, or with a prop. Even like right. the existence of Appa. Like, I'm thinking. Yes of that giant dog thing on the never ending story. Don't do that yeah. to Appa. There's he's a he's supposed to be animated. Just leave all of it leave right. it alone. And I kinda I kinda want to shout that at the world right now. Let people discover older things who want to discover them. You don't have to remake everything. Get some new ideas yes. for crying out loud. They're making another Charlie's Angels reboot? Really? They're making another Charlie's <laughs> Angels reboot. <laughs> But why, uh, though? Did, well, because right. of how great the one with Drew Barrymore and Cameron <laughs> Diaz. Um, I, I, I don't know. The whole thing was, to me, the that announcement coming right as I was watching them. I was like, don't. No. I, yeah. I, I, I don't have yeah. an open mind. I just changed my mind. I'm not going to watch it. My son will yeah. watch it. And here's my other thought, dude. They, yeah. they are going to go like way further with agendas and left leaning crap than Cora yeah. did. And, you know, everyone's got to one up the last thing now with how woke it is. Yeah. This bubble's going to pop. The pendulum's going to come back. Everybody don't freak out. Be all millennial and recognize the wheat and the, the tares are both growing. But where we are right now is in a moment where it's going it, to, yeah, it's, it's, they're going to steal the charm by it not being animated. They're going to steal the charm by it not being as, as, big and fun and epic feeling and they're going to steal the charm by turning it into something it wasn't at all which is a political yeah. tool yeah yep agreed agreed all right man well i need to get going uh we are out of time but before i do just want to uh give a quick reminder to all of our lovely people out there if you haven't yet uh rated us on itunes or spotify or podbean please go ahead and drop us a rating uh, give us a review, uh, five star or better. <laughs> or better. Um, <laughs> Dude, it is July 2019, and our last iTunes review was July 2018. That's all I'm saying. All right, so let's let's get those up again, folks. Um, it's a great way to really just uh, get the podcast promoted. Um, it, it, you know, the the more ratings we get, the higher it is up on the search list, so people can find us. Um, you know, I was doing a search into iTunes and. These go to 11, and there's another podcast out there that pops up uh, with us, where in the past we were kind of the only ones in all of our episodes. So let's see if we can get ourselves back up there again as, uh, you know, being the only ones on the market. So You're saying you want to destroy um, this other podcast? Not destroy, per se. <laughs> you just don't want them to exist so that we're the only one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, oh yeah one one oh, thing man, man i want to throw out there a uh, little shout out for my boy zach burnham who uh is in yes. the uh the discussion group my boy makes pie show boards and sells them with nice. a laser he makes nice. them i think he's like uh all the way back to like taking customers for like 
2163 or something like way off in the future. But if that is your cup of tea, he also made a an app. I think he made it where you can play Pi Show on your phone. Uh, so oh yeah, be like I've Uncle Iroh, get a little tea going. Tea that's not just hot leaf water. But, that's right. Uh, good tea and uh, and play some <laughs> Pi Show. Faux show. Faux show. Pie show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Zach, we just rocked the Casbah. These go to 11.